Hello there guys. So today I'm going to be going over how to make a custom branch to go and work with the input buffer plugin um, and get it working inside Able. Um, obviously Able's branch task doesn't do that by default because it's made to work with the standard UE stuff. Um, but it's not too difficult to implement so let's have a look. Um, first thing is that we'll look at my player controller. Um, so you have this event post buffer input you'll notice this is a thing we get because you have an input buffer now um, and you can use this um, this is basically an event that happens every time the input buffer has something added to it um, i use it to call a buffer tick because i use a state machine and i use this as an event so every time my buffer ticks it lets one of these tests to see if an ability can play um, anyway that's something totally different but we'll have a look at how I do branching because obviously branching again is something quite different. The main core of it though is this check inputs function um, which takes in a command and then I can negate it. So um, if I, you know, if I have the command be left mouse button, I can have it negated and then it will, um, it will return true when I don't have the left mouse button pressed, if that makes sense. Um, so all I'm kind of doing in here is I'm getting my input buffer. I'm looking for the match command function. And then uh, I'm using my negate to switch the end result if I want to. And then I'm just returning that match command, really. Um, so the first thing I do for my custom branch is I have a custom scratch pad. Um, and I have whether I'm branching at the end. We need to know this because that's kind of an important feature. Or, uh, you could ignore it if you don't absolutely don't need it. But I wanted to add it because the default one has it. It just seemed to make sense. Um, and I'm just going to hold my owning pawn and the owning controller. And then we're going to come into the branch ability. So if I go to the on task start, um, the first thing I do is I initialize my variables and put them all into the scratch pad. So I have this get variables macro. Um, and I'm getting the scratch pad. I'm checking it's valid and I'm casting to it. And then I'm just returning all my data. So I'm returning the scratch pad itself. I'm returning my controller, my pawn, and my branch. Um, in this initialize function, I'm going to be uh, setting those. So, you know, uh, right now it doesn't know what the controller and the pawn are, but I'm going to set the pawn here and I'm going to set the controller here. And then we're good to start checking stuff. So, what do we need to check? Well, we might want to check if the ability is on cooldown. Um, so, I'm coming through here, I'm getting those variables, now they're set. And I'm going to have a look. Um, I have ignore cooldown which is a parameter. Um, so if you don't know in custom tasks, you can have all your variables here. You can't write to these. They're mainly for reading. Um, and so that's why we have the scratch pad. You write to your scratch pad. Um, but these are user parameters. So if I come into an ability and I look at my, I have my custom branch here, you can see that I have use current active hotkey. I can negate my input check. Um, I can change my command so I can have a different action button do something. Um, I can change the ability that I want it to branch to. I can tell it to branch at end, ignore the cooldown, stop the movements, do it a single check. So this would just be a single frame instead of multiple frames. Um, and I can put extra abilities on cooldown if I want to. Um, so yeah, so I'm getting that ignore cooldown. So you know, if I was in here and if this was true, then what it would do is it would say, okay, I want to remove the cooldown from this ability. Um, so, you know, if you're branching, uh, a lot of games kind of have it where an ability might have a cooldown, but if you do it via a branch, um, you could ignore the cooldown. Um, uh, maybe this isn't the best way to do it because thinking about it, you'd probably remove the cooldown altogether, but then it would go back on cooldown. Uh, I don't know. It's a bit of a, an odd one. There might be a better way to do that where... Um, maybe you had a separate ability that was on no cooldown, I don't know, whatever. Things to think about, but options you have, right? Um, and then, yeah, I'm just getting the class, uh, the ability class from my parameter again, and I'm checking, is it on cooldown? You can just grab this from the able ability thing, which is easy to get because I have uh, my variables set up. Um, and then we're just returning whether that's true or false. So if we come back into start, you can see that if it ends up true, then we don't do anything. If it's false, then, you know, if the ability is not on cooldown, then we can go and check if the input's true. Um, and in here, I'm just getting my pawn again, and I'm getting the controller. 
and I'm saying, okay, um, do I want to use the current active hotkey? So because I have action bars, uh, my hotkeys are going to be variables. So sometimes I need to know what button I had just pressed. Um, uh, for example, uh, when I, if I have an ability I want to hold down, I'm going to need to know what button I just pressed because I'm going to need to hold that exact button, um, not a static one that I've set previously. Um, so I can grab that and I can say, okay, the button I just pressed, which I set whenever an ability activates, use that one, or I can use the one that I've got set up in my, or I can use the one I've got here, right? Um, and then it checks that input and I can negate that if I want to. So, you know, I, I really, I, the use for this basically is if I have a button that I need to hold down in, in order to like cast something and then I can negate the input. So actually when I let go of the button, that's when it's going to branch into another ability. Um, okay, so I've done my input check and I've decided whether I want that to be true or false. And then I, because the inputs come back true, if that happens, um, then I can set my branch at end. So this is the parameter over here and this is the scratch pad. Um, they're both very similar. One has a question mark, but I just had bad naming conventions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm just saying, do I want to branch at the end? Um, if this is true, then that's fine. What we'll do is we'll just not do anything because we don't want to branch right now. We want to branch at the end. Um, if it comes back false and you know, so it's not on cooldown, the input check is true. We're not branching at the end. We want to branch right now. Then we're going to branch to the ability. And then I'm just going to uh, pull out some of that data, check the class is valid, create the ability context and then branch. Um, I'm using branch ability here, not activate ability. They are slightly different. So do bear that in mind. Um, and then I'm cleaning up the input buffer history and I'm setting extra cooldowns if I want to. Um, this is like, uh, say for example, if I have a dash and instead of having one dash with variable animations, I just have four different dashes. Maybe they have different things and it's too much of a pain to make a variable. Um, but I want them to have share one cooldown. I can say that my dashes have the other dash abilities on cooldown or something, you know, depending on how you want to set things up, it could or could not be useful. Um, and then, yeah, we return success. So in here, I'm set up my custom brand, my custom scratch pad. My is single frame is set to a variable. That's that single check. So in here, this is that, right? So um, it changes it uh, based on that. Um, on tick, I'm doing basically the same thing again. The first thing I'm checking is, am I branching at the end? Um, if branch at end is true, then at some point we have uh, returned a true input check because we only ever set branch at end after input check. So we returned a true input check and it said we do want to branch at the end. So we don't need to check anymore because we've already, we've already, you know, passed the, the input check. And now we're just waiting for the end of the ability. So there's no need to do all this other stuff. We, we know that we're gonna do it at the end. And then on the task end, I'm just doing the same thing again, but if it's true, I'm branching. So it's kind of like forcing that branch at the task end. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just we're on, on tick, we're just checking if it's on cooldown, we're checking the input, and then we're checking the branch at end and we're branching. So it's the same sort of thing over and over from that point, right? Um, it's just finding the features you think you need and uh, putting it in the correct order to kind of, you know, have it, um, come out correctly so yeah that's really all there is to it um it's just a matter of checking those things and then just using the the branch ability um yeah anyway i, I hope that helps um shouldn't be the hardest thing in the world but uh yeah good luck